From the Evening Standard in London, I'm David Marsland and this is The Leader. It's been 10 years since the woman once known simply as Kate Middleton stepped into Westminster Abbey to marry Prince William, the man she met when they both studied at St Andrews University. How times have changed. There were no glamorous dresses or even crowds during this pandemic era when the now Duchess of Cambridge and her husband visited a farm near Darlington to drive a tractor and play with a young girl and her goat, Named Dumbledore. Not bad. You're far better at that. I think you've got the experience. So is this the royal life that Kate expected, and what role has she found herself in a decade after joining the so-called firm? Evening Standard columnist and senior editor of the Economist, Anne McElvoy, is with me now. And Anne, I remember covering the royal wedding ten years ago, and people were talking about how Kate, this woman from a normal background her mum was an air stewardess, could cope inside the royal family. And there was actually quite a bit of concern about her. Has she found a role, though? I think a mixture of her own experience and maturing in that role of the Duchess of Cambridge and events, frankly, have brought her to the fore. I think at the moment it is her moment to shine as she looks back on these 10 years. You're absolutely right, David. I remember like a lot of people writing about how was this girl very much from Middle England, prosperous, commercial Middle England. How was she going to fit in to the royal household? We know that a lot of people have had problems coming into the royals. It's not the dream it can look like from the outside. Well, it's, it's quite a, a daunting prospect, but um, you know, hopefully I'll take it in my stride. And William's a great teacher, so hopefully he'll be able to, to help me along the way. And I really look, look, forward, to, look forward to spending my time with, with William. He's very good at flattery. <laughs> but I think the last few years, and particularly her stabilising role after the crisis that was unleashed by the, shall we say, the quick coming and going of, of Meghan Markle into the royal fold, has really played to her strengths. So what are those strengths, Anne? I mean, she's often compared to Meghan Markle. People talk about an alleged rivalry between them. She doesn't have or seem to want that Hollywood glamour about her that her sister-in-law does. Although it would be wrong to say that Kate Middleton isn't a fashion leader. But what is it that she has that the royal family needs right now? I call her the centrist royal, leaning on the kind of political definition of a centrist is when the extremes are all sturm and drang and shouting about things or complaining about something and then you've got the ultra conservative wing it doesn't want anything to change I think that Kate sits very nicely and shrewdly in the middle of that that she is modernizing she does put out videos she uses Instagram hello what's your name Isla hi Isla you look very nice today. I love your hairband. I'm a princess today. You're a princess. You it's look. Snowy outside. <gasps> no way. Have you been outside? Have you made a snowman yet? No. She's a good laugh, you know, she's good sport. At the same time, she doesn't rock the boat and she's not asking for the sort of wholesale changes in the way that the royals conduct their business in the firm, so-called, as Meghan Markle and Harry seemed to be demanding. For that reason, I think she's become quite a balancing force in the family. In a way, she's as important as Prince William or Prince Charles, People need to see there is continuity and that you can be happy, you can flourish in this family. And that's what she stands for. Yeah, but her position within the royal family is, it's inevitably going to change, isn't it? Because for a start, her husband is second in line to the throne. But even before that, Prince Charles will be king. How does her role change when that happens? There'll be a very interesting transition, of course, because they will be in circumstances which the Queen, who has been the linchpin of the royal institution for so many decades, will no longer be with us. That will be, I think, a great trial and tribulation for Prince Charles as he takes the helm. And you saw the outpouring of feeling about the death of Prince Philip. Well, just imagine how that will be uh, when the Queen dies. And I think that will be the moment when we will see Kate and William come into their own. It will be a sense clearer. We will see how they are going to relate 
to Prince Charles when he becomes King Charles. That's not been entirely easy. It was once described to me as Prince Charles feeling a, a bit like the sort of meat in the sandwich between the Queen and then this popular rising new generation. And they need to get rid of that irritation. One thing Charles must have learned to his cost recently is he can't have irritation or difficulty with his children. The roles have got to be clear. And I think Kate, who is very good at being emollient, she's good at listening to people, she understands when they feel hurt, is good at that. And she's going to need that skill because it's not quite as simple as just waiting for your turn. There's always a change in roles in the royal family when the generations switch over. Do you feel like the British public knows the real Kate then. You've talked about some of the things that she's been done, but she does seem to be quite, she does seem to have been quite successful, in fact, at remaining relatively private, doesn't she? Kate's been successful in remaining private on her own terms. She spends quite a lot of time at Anmer Hall at their residence. I think she likes that. She likes being there, you know, with a, a relatively small staff and her children. But at the same time, she doesn't mind getting out and about, does she? You know, she teeters around in the regulation high heels we now expect from Royals. She likes her sport. She liked her sport at school, so she'll play a bit of hockey. She tried the golf this week, which was quite funny because she missed the ball. (laughs) She doesn't mind, I think, being out and about as long as she knows the terms of what she's in for. Privately, and she does uh, turn up at some drinks parties and uh, and things that, that, that have been occasionally hosted in the royal household, she's she's quite sort of sharp. You know, she knows what she wants to say. She knows what she wants to do. She knows when she wants to come. She knows when she wants to go. She's interested in the art. She's interested in photography. I think she's learned that you give away a certain version of yourself and you keep another part of yourself private. If not, you do get eaten up and you feel perhaps perhaps more vulnerable, and that's where some of the problems can begin. But I think she's learned to walk that line, and I think she's now looking at those pictures of her this week. I think she's pretty happy with the life she's made. And you can read Anne's column on the Duchess of Cambridge at standard.co.uk. That's the leader. We're back tomorrow at 4pm. Subscribe to make sure you don't miss out.